Joseph Lawrence Green August 1, was an American author of science fiction novels and short stories whose most familiar creations are Tom Corbett, Space Cadet which, in 1951, became a television series popular with young audiences, as well as Dig Allen Space Explorer, a series of six books published between 1959 and 1962, which focused around the adolescent hero Dig Allen and his interplanetary adventures in the genre of boys' juvenile literature. A prolific writer, he also contributed numerous stories to comic books and was an editor, until 1972, for Grosset Publishing while writing under a number of pseudonyms including, purportedly, the house pen name, Alvin Schwartz, and also, Richard Mark, and using sundry variations of his own name, Joseph Lawrence, Joe Green, Joseph Verdi, Larry Verdi, Lawrence Vert, which exemplified such foreign language wordplays for Green as Verdi, Verdi, and Vert. Topic: Comics. <laughs> 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 Joseph Green was involved in many key titles during the so-called Golden Age of comic books, during the late 1930s and early 1940s. He apparently acted as, "...a ghost writer for the sum of most famous comic characters of the era," including The Green Llama, Spunky and Golden Lad for Spark Publications. In 1942, he is believed to have begun working for DC Comics on their all-American line of characters including Aquaman, Boy Commandos, Green Arrow, Hawkman, Superman and Wonder Woman. He is also said to have worked for comics publishers including the American Comics Group, Better Publications including On the Fighting Yank, Dell Publications including Tom Corbett, Space Cadet, Lev Gleason Publications, Marvel Comics as well as Fawcett Comics and Hillman Periodic articles for which, during the early 1950s, he wrote various romance comics. According to comics historian Jerry Bales, Green wrote for Frank Frazetta's syndicated newspaper strip Johnny Comet, Ace McCoy in 1952–53, and CIO News first strip, The Adventures of Jim Barry, Troubleshooter. He also reputedly provided work for the pulp magazine features The Black Bat and The Phantom. Early Tom Corbett Green also produced work for radio, film and television, most notably for various versions of Tom Corbett. Around 1945, he provided a script for a comic book storyline likely entitled Space Academy, before submitting to Orbit Feature Services, Inc., on January 16, 1946, a script originally titled The Pirates of Space, but subsequently revised to Space Cadets for a prospective radio show featuring primary cadet Tom Ranger. The following year, Green refined the title as Space Academy, submitting another radio script to NBC, and, ultimately, to Rock Hill Studios, which expanded its efforts in working with him to develop it as a show for the newly developing medium of television. By 1949, the title was reconsidered, as both, Cadet and Academy were thought to be somewhat ubiquitous. Indeed, in 1948, Robert A. Heinlein, one of the top names in science fiction, published a novel entitled Space Cadet so the title was expanded by Green and Rock Hill's Stanley Wolfe to include the name of the main character, Tom Ranger, Space Cadet. In order for this to come about, Rock Hill licensed the Space Cadet name from Robert Heinlein. And Milk Ed th e connection in its publicity. Thus, in October 1949, Tom Ranger and the Space Cadets was developed as a syndicated newspaper strip, although the strip went unused until it was recycled a few years later. 
Topic Corbett debut on TV and in comics on October 2, 1950, at the start of TV's third full schedule season, drawing on the unpublished newspaper strip, and undergoing a last-minute name change, Tom Corbett, Space Cadet premiered on CBS. Eleven months later, on September 9, 1951, a newspaper strip of the same name, written by Paul S. Newman with unknown levels of input from Green and illustrated by Ray Bailey a ghost artist for Milton Caniff on the Steve Canyon strip, made its debut. Distributed by Field Enterprise Syndicate, it drew heavily on the unpublished 1949 Tom Ranger strip, itself recycled and adapted into the first TV episode. In 1951, Green sued Rockhill over royalty payments, ultimately being awarded a judgment over payments for the television or radio show, but not both, as well as full rights minus royalty fees to Rockhill to any comic book version of Tom Corbett. Green wrote Tom Corbett, Space Ranger comics for Dell Publications between 1952 and 1954. In the same year, Grosset and Dunlap began publishing a series of Tom Corbett books, beginning with Stand By for Mars, while the second and third seasons of Tom Corbett proceeded on ABC television, while a six month radio show aired on ABC Radio. In 1953, with the financially successful release of the theatrical feature It Came from Outer Space, Rockhill sued Universal Pictures for using a modified Practical Products Tom Corbett helmet in the production. Universal settled the case for $750. Topic Corbett Books Published, starting in 1952, by Grosset and Dunlap which, by the 1950s, was a well-established publisher of series such as Nancy Drew, The Hardy Boys and Rick Brandt, the Tom Corbett series was published as a tie-in to the character whose copyright lay with Rockhill Radio, and the plots, which strove to provide inspiration, echoed the radio scripts more than the ones on television or in comics, written under the name Carey Rockwell. The series authorship is not nearly as well documented as that of the Straitmeyer Syndicate's output, but suggestions naturally include Green himself as editor an association made by Jerry Bales if not also writer. Another possibility names the Cincinnati Kid author Richard Jessup as a candidate for authorship of the Corbett novels. Technical advice was provided by Willie Lay, one of the leading rocket experts of the 1950s, and also a writer of science fiction who not only helped design the Mark's Tom Corbett Space Academy playset for the character, but was known for years as a key voice urging the development of U.S. space exploration and as author of myriad journal articles and books, including contributions contributions to Collier's Man in the Moon series. Topic Corbett continues The series would ultimately run for five seasons, beginning its fourth season on Dumont Network in 1953, and its fifth and final season a year later on NBC. Grosset and Dunlap published its eighth Tom Corbett title Robot Rocket in 1955-56, marking the effective end of the series on radio, television, and in books, following an investigation by the Internal Revenue Service in 1965 over delinquent taxes. Rockhill's rights to Tom Corbett were purchased by a new entity, Direct Recordings, Inc., while papers owned by Stanley Wolfe were later donated to the University of Southern California. In 1984, Green gave his personal kinescopes of the television episodes to TV nostalgia merchant Wade Williams, who subsequently assumed some rights to Corbett. In 1990, Eternity Comics produced a five issue collection of the 1950s newspaper strips, under the title Original Tom Corbett, Space Cadet. Topic books Green is likely to have overseen, plotted and edited, if not also ghost-written, some or all of the eight Tom Corbett, Space Cadet novels for Grosset and Dunlap, published between 1952 and 1956. Between 1959 and 1962, he wrote six titles in the juvenile SF series Dig Allen Space Explorer for Golden Press, these began with 1959's The Forgotten Star, and finished with 1962's Lost City of Uranus. 
Green served as an editor at Grosset roughly between 1964 and 1973, ultimately working his way up to the positions of managing editor and acting editor in chief before leaving the company. During his semi retirement in the late 1970s and 1980s, he published a number of independent almanacs, several about astrology and one entitled American Elsafen Almanac. Joseph Green's son, Paul, in a letter subsequently reprinted online, indicated that his father died in 1990, the year of his 76th birthday, but the date and circumstances have not been indicated. <laughs> 